Hey, I'm Weekend Gabe, and you're checking out Weekend at Gabe's, and thanks for checking out this latest episode. While you're here, also follow us on these social medias at Weekend Gabe, at Weekend at Gabe's, and also at The Real Sam Crane. Thanks for checking us out. Uh, joining us next on the show, it is a pleasure to have her on to be to grace us with her presence. Uh, she's been putting in work for a long time, but you just might only now begin to know her. But you've been sleeping, so we're going to get you caught up. Sydney August joining us tonight on Weekend at Gabe's. How are you? Oh, we're doing the audio thing again. No, she's Sorry. Good. We got it. Oh, we got it. Can you hear me? Yeah, we got you. Yeah, Perfect. Got you. Yay. Fantastic. Hell yeah, hell yeah. I'm well, getting the applause eat. again. <laughs> yes! It is so good to have you. Thank you for good. coming. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate your time here with us. Uh, I, I assume that you're uh, Sam. We introduce him every show from broadcasting from an undisclosed location on Chicago's north side. I imagine you are as well. Is that still true? Yes, it is very true. <laughs> There you go. Are, are you, there you go. Uh, first, uh, first off, thank you again for joining us. We appreciate it. Uh, you've been working for so long and putting in so much, so much work. Uh, there's a lot of things that have been covered in a lot of interviews, so we're going to try to uh, bounce around a little, a few other items that have been going on in your career. But obviously, the big item as of recently is signing with uh, Little Dirk's OTF uh, label or group and being part of that collection of artists. Uh, Take us into that. We just recently saw the the Kanye West Jesus um, documentary. Genius, genius, that, not Jesus. Thank you. Sorry. Appreciate <laughs> it. Hey, some may uh, one Kanye may actually call himself Jesus. I'm just speculating. But anyways, uh, the genius doc of him getting that chaining day as when we became part of Rockefeller Records was your experience anywhere similar to that. No, it it wasn't too too much uh, a similarity, but um, no, it was it was super crazy because um, he initially reached out to me, and I was like, you know, out of all these millions of followers, my post or whatever. So I thought it was just absolutely wild. Um, and so yeah, he just asked if I was signed, and you know, I've been independent for some years before. Um, right. so I thought it was- opportunity to sort of take, take you know that and design and you know see how this goes um with my career and yeah I mean so far it's been good um you know stacking up on content and networking with so many different artists um yeah I've, I've learned a lot so I'm, I'm glad to be in the position where I am today word word um talk about talk about that inception of your career uh Obviously, we, we've heard the stories of, of Kansas University, who I believe are, are in the Elite Eight right now or, or something oh to that effect. So Rock Chalk Jayhawk. Or... Yeah, Rock Chalk. We're getting there. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, yeah, like I went to school out in Kansas, um, graduated during the pandemic, actually, 2020. Um, I studied English creative writing, so I kind of use that right. hand in hand music um business minor so you know i kind of took that uh to my advantage and if i wasn't doing homework then i was in my room writing or recording and um just sending rough tracks back and forth to my engineer who's out here uh, in chicago so yeah i mean it was it was all time management and um yeah i mean i i loved being out in kansas like it's so different from chicago but you know i made some great friends out there <laughs> Do you have do you have time management like tried and true tips for you? Because I mean, obviously that's a lot to juggle. But like, I, I I heard that you got the the message from Lil Durk like walking to class one day. Yeah, uh, it, was, it was it was on my birthday. I was walking to class, and um, my engineer who I was talking about, uh, he like posted a video of me rapping one of Dirk's songs, and so I reposted it, tagged him. And then that's the thing that he saw and caught his attention. And then he saw, you know, my music and all that and reached out to me and, you know, oh, your music is dope. Like, are you signed? Blah, blah, blah. And yeah, like we were just locked in since then. And I just thought it was so funny. I'm just walking to class on campus and dirt hits my line. I was, was, like, was there a brief moment where you're like, this got to be fake? This no, I was like, <laughs> I had the 
pause for a second, like on my way to my writing class. I'm like, hold on, this can't be real. <laughs> but it was. Right, so, right. And yeah, I mean, like I said, like I've been independent for, I don't even, basically my whole life. I've been making music, you know, a long time. Um, and so just to kind of see this door opening, like I had to take that, you know, opportunity. So here we are and I'm, <laughs> I'm blessed. Like it's, it's, a, I'm so grateful. <laughs> One more question so, here, Gabe, like real quick. Uh, how do you feel like you fit into that, to that label? Obviously, Mm. Little Dark's music sounds different yeah. than than your music. You you do the sort of singer pop singer thing even uh, these days, especially with your recent yeah. stuff. How do you yeah. how do you feel? Did that line up for you, or was there any assurances that he gave you that this music could be pushed alongside the the music that he's making? So I'm very different from the rest of the collective, <laughs> you know. Um, but I think it's cool because I bring a new aspect to the label. Um, I mean, I, I think it's cool because, you know, Dirk's very versatile as well with his music. Like, he'll do his drill rapping. He'll do melodic, you know, yeah. he'll sing, you know. So right. I, I can fit in there. Um, but, you know, I think it's cool because I stand out, you know, across that. And, I mean, we're all representing Chicago. So I think that's the one common aspect of it, which is which is nice. Um but yeah, I mean, it's it's cool being in the studio because just giving direction, um, playing mu my music to him and, you know, just trying to like build what's next, like what's next. So, yeah, that's, right. that's sort of where we're at right now. Oh, yeah. So so in a 2019 Lyrical Lemonade uh, Q&A, you had listed Dirk as one of the artists that you'd like to work with in the future. Uh, yeah. Could you ever imagine three years later that all of this would have unfolded and transpired. No, it's such like a full circle thing. Like even since high school, um, I would listen to Dirk like before basketball games just to like get me pumped and all that. And and like now Hold on, hold on. What's the position, Sydney? What what are you playing? Man, point guard. What? I'm the one. Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I can t I can tell she has some Stockton to her. You yeah, know what I'm you saying? know, well, <laughs> <laughs> but it's definitely just a full circle moment for me um he's very inspiring you know to to artists and just seeing his story and um you know being from chicago is super inspiring so yeah I, I feel super blessed to um kind of have him in my corner yeah yeah Growing up, uh, you mentioned that you were uh, you attended Sen High School, which was a fine arts music uh, based school. I, I've actually visited Sen, and it's uh, it's a monster uh, it's, school. That uh, it's huge. Yeah, it's pretty big. <laughs> uh, what did that? Because you also have this musical background with your father, who's a well, yeah. he's like a, a music director, or he does a lot of ads, but also he's a music and also author in his own right. And yeah. your mom also doing visual arts, and you guys are all this collective of creativity and growing up in that space. What what was that like? As take us back to as a child, growing yeah. up and developing, you know, your interest in music, but also generating your own passion for uh, music yeah. creation or getting into a space of creativity. Yeah, I feel like growing up being around my parents as artists, and even my sister, she's a visual artist as well. Um, I feel like we all inspire each other. Um, we bring a lot of discussion to the table about like creativity and all that. Um, I so bet. Cool. <laughs> but yeah, no, it it's super it's super nice environment to be in. Just growing up, um, my dad has a fat collection of records, you know, from his dad, and then just stuff that he's collecting as well. So he would show me a whole bunch of genres and and I just remember being in the car with my mom and my sister whether it was a road trip or just driving to school and you know she played like Dixie Chicks or like James Blunt or like Christina Aguilera we'll just mm -hmm. harmonize and sing and you know so I feel like that's sort of where it started um and then I don't know I feel like I was always singing when I was young and um when I was in middle school, I would take, <clears throat> excuse me, I would take vocal lessons. Um, 
So we would have like seasonal gigs at the school and we would like each pick your own song and, and sing that in front of, you know, the school. So right. probably that's where my performance, uh, you know, <laughs> experience started. Um, but yeah, I mean, and then high school, like, as you said, I went to send. So I was um, auditioned into the fine arts music program, got in, and then that sort of opened my horizons to a choir like you know environment and and working with other artists um in different sections and stuff so i think that's where i sort of gained um i don't know i feel like that's where i wanted to to be a more solo artist as opposed mm. to like working not was like it beef? Concert. Was it beef? You can let us know no, if it was no, beef. No, it was, <laughs> no, I was like, okay, it's it's cool working with like a collaborative of people, but it's like I also want to move at my own my own pace. You know, I don't want to like right. behind or like be too ahead of, of people or whatever. Um so yeah, I, I feel like I gained that perspective in high school, and then that's when I really started uh becoming serious, making my own, you know original songs posting it to soundcloud and then discovering united masters which Mm. you know distribution to all dsps like so yeah it was it was a (laughs) a whole bunch of (laughs) stuff but no i i mean yeah my my childhood definitely shaped like my creative aspect (laughs) oh yeah oh yeah. yeah you you uh in another interview you mentioned sort of working on producing for yourself uh, and I bring that up now because you spoke about, you know, really wanting to be the solo artist. Um, yeah. But you do a fair amount of work for other people. I mean, obviously, you're featured on the deluxe, uh, Only the Family. Um, you've, you've been featured on many other songs beyond that. Yeah. Uh, where, where is your where's your sweet spot? I mean, you've worked with some of the most incredible producers in the city, but you've also produced songs for yourself. Where Where do you like to be? Man, I don't know. I feel like it just depends on my mood in the day. But like, <laughs> um, no, my friend Castle, he he's the engineer that I've been talking about, you know, like me being in Kansas, sending sending stuff to Castle. Um, he has a studio um, and we would just book sessions and we would engineer, create music, produce like from scratch. Um, and I feel like that's kind of where I got most inspired to produce my own stuff um like electronically um Mm -hmm. but before that like with my singing lessons and all that like I would learn guitar and piano so growing up you know I've I've become familiar with chords and all that stuff so I had that sort of knowledge when creating the music like on Logic or whatever um so yeah I mean I don't know if I'm having a session, like I, I would definitely want to create something from scratch if I'm working with an artist or collaborating with an artist. Um, I don't know. I, I, I feel like it brings a different energy to the session, hmm. but yeah, I like to produce. It's, it's an outlet. <laughs> hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. And, and one of the things that sticks out to, to me about listening to your music is, is the sort of very warm, very delicate, yet very precise vocal tone mm. uh i mean you talked about the history of, of singing in the car with your mom but then also getting the direction through sen and and taking singing lessons as a child mm. but where do you attribute that vocal control because it is super unique and you don't sound like other people because you have this incredible range this incredible depth thank and you. this incredible ability to just hit exactly what you want to hit thank you no i feel like it it goes back to like those vocal lessons like um we would do different warm-ups and stuff uh and so i'll kind of put my mind back in in those in those lessons and um how can i do like vocal control like breathing and you know just like little technicalities like that um but then also like if i'm recording i'll probably think about that and just kind of move off of emotion and just kind of take from that but I appreciate what you said. That was sweet. <laughs> very, very sweet. Um, I, I want to uh, talk a little bit about some of your um, your initiative to really get your career going. 
Uh, and you've already been like touched by like a lot of really uh, iconic artists and uh, videographers. Uh, like D Games is one that like a name that just rings off as being a innovator of the music, uh, music, uh, music videos here in Chicago. And he was able to do Ride for You. Talk about like how like being part of that or getting the attention because it seems like throughout your career you always get the attention from the right people that yeah. they are able to just sort of uplift you to the next step I, in your career. Yeah, no, it's I feel so blessed to like I don't know because every opportunity kind of reached out to me like, mm. um, and I I just don't take any of that for granted like. And like the D Games thing, like working with a uh, Chicago legend, Sosa, I'm like, what? It's so crazy just seeing that. And then, yeah, I mean, everything's just super full circle. Um, yeah, it was crazy. Like D Games reached out to me. He really liked Rod. And um, we sort of came up together. And um, I had my friend at the time like come out and we would, you know, we just had a ball with that song. It was so fun. But yeah, I mean, I feel so blessed, like, uh, all these opportunities just sort of reaching out um, to me. So I feel like I'm doing something right. <laughs> you oh, know? Yeah. And, and one of those most recent opportunities I just saw, actually, before me and Gabe hopped on for our pre-production meeting, uh, a friend of the show, King and S, is bringing back Girls Weekend. Yes! Uh, yes, I will absolutely hit that. I will absolutely yeah. hit that. Um and uh, you are among, uh, I believe, four other performers mm -hmm. uh, who will be performing that that night. Is that uh, something you're, you you got to be really excited about? That it looks so, incredible. Yes, I'm so excited. I mean, like all star lineup and subterranean. It's such an intimate like uh, place. Like I've never performed there, so I'm super excited for it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and Girls Weekend, like, I love what they're doing um, with Chicago artists, females. Um, so, yeah, I feel super excited. And, yeah, I'm, I'm like, I'm ready. Like, <laughs> say money, what? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, there, there's a tidbit in here I'm going to throw out there real quick. So, uh, District 21, who was featured on your debut uh, album, he's the son of Mac 10 who right. happens to be one of my favorite West Coast rappers. Oh, really? So, yes. So if you, could, if, you, if you could put that together, yours truly would be appreciative. <laughs> um, but, like, well, what about that? Like, you know, he's West Side Connection, being yeah. part of Ice Cube's team. Like, what is that? Because like, you said you met his son through Mac-10. So how would you meet Mac-10? Again, like, okay, so my friend from Chicago, he's out in California now. Um, it's so funny. Like I met Mac through my friend's mom because uh, they were working together and Mac was curating like his own label. And so right. I, my friend's mom showed him my stuff and then he was like, mm. so he wanted to, he like flew me out to LA, got me a session introduce me to district um and yeah i mean like the label thing fell through like that you know <laughs> that didn't happen but um it was so cool to be in his presence and you know meeting his son like we obviously connected more because of our age <laughs> um right. yeah so no i i remain in contact with district he's a good friend of mine um you know we we always talk about kind of like like label situations and and um just like this music stuff because we we can just relate to each other a lot um so yeah no i've been working with district for a while um he's super talented great lyricist um yeah and i'm excited to see what what's coming out for him as well i know he's got a lot of stuff that he's planning so i'm excited Fantastic. Are there are there artists in the city that uh you're noticing that you're excited to work with locally mm-hmm Oh, for sure. No, there's a whole, man, there's a whole collective of us just waiting to mm, skyrocket. Um, no, I just recently met an artist. She goes by Sunite. She's become a good friend of mine. Um, she's so dope. Like, I, I just had a couple of sessions with her and she just blows me away. Um, who else? Kari, um, Dreamer. 
I just became familiar with them. Like man, Dreamer, Dream, I've been trying to get Dreamer on the show for like a year. Oh, <laughs> oh keep reaching out. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, there's there's just so many of us that I do want to work out with or work work out with, work with, and um, get some shows together. I feel like that'd be super fun. Maybe like during the yeah. summer or something. Nice. Yeah. Right. Um, we're we're also. We, well, we like to have fun on this show, so let's uh, let's let's ask some fun questions. In another uh, interview, uh, you mentioned that uh, you've always wanted to be a singer, or you would work in an ice cream truck. Oh boy! Yeah. Um. So that, to that effect, uh-huh. what is the best order from an ice cream truck? Ice cream truck comes down the street. You're eight years old, nine years old, whatever it is. Run outside. What are you getting? What's your order? I would get either a soft serve if they have that or a SpongeBob with the gumballs. I was really hoping you would say SpongeBob with the gumballs because yeah, that, that one. Gumballs. <laughs> it'd definitely be smacking when you just get out of like the chlorine pool. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, I don't know. I was a weird kid. Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Um, and we touched a little bit also on your, your basketball, uh, ab- abilities before, and also, uh, work, uh, working down at Kansas, uh, university. Can I get a pick? Are you, are you riding with the Jayhawks against Providence in the, uh, I am. Is that you tonight? Know, like, it might be tonight. No, I think it might be, I think it's tomorrow. I hope okay. it's tomorrow. I hope it's not right now. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> no, no. Uh, wait, I was going to say something, but now I forgot. Um, Repeat. Yeah. What you just said. Kansas versus Providence. For, that's the first pick you got to make. And then you got to make it. Will Kansas go all the way? Look, I have Kansas going all the way. Mm. Because I just, my gut was like, look, you you have to because you, gra- like, you are Kansas. So you got to <laughs> have them going all the way. Like, and, and the only other team I was kind of rocking with was Wisconsin, but. You see how that came out. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, Kansas, Kansas is my winner. That's in my bracket. So, I'm praying. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, uh, and then also coming up for you is uh, April 16th at, at Shuba's. What can what can yeah. fans expect to uh, to hear at that show? Yeah, no, I'm super excited. I I haven't previously heard of Don Lifted. Um, I know he's from Memphis. But, yeah, I got a, I got a dope set. So everyone better come through. Um, Shuvas, yeah, April sixteenth. I got I got some shows lined up. So let's go. Yeah, April seventh, Elmhurst Hall. Um, Girls Weekend, April tenth. Of, of course. You know Chicago sub T, and then yeah, Shuvas the sixteenth. So I'm super excited. You know, I'm pumped. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm very excited for you. I, I very much hope that uh, eventually this uh, this next year, by the next time we see you, you will have been on that tour that you were so hoping to be on uh, and the pandemic derailed it. So uh, you absolutely deserve it. And uh, and yeah, once again, thank you for coming on. Thank you. Guys. I, I got, wait, I got two. I got two quick questions. Oh, the game's got more. Sorry. Two. Uh, no worries. All right. Uh, so these are all fun questions as well. So we're we're at the that that part of the show. That part of the interview. All right. Yeah. Uh, you started your career covering your some of your favorite artists, including Chance the Rapper. Uh-huh. If you can cover a song today, which song would you want to cover? Oh man, probably like an Ed Sheeran song or like mm. I don't know. Uh, Give me love by Ed Sheeran. Uh, ooh, if I could perfectly execute a Christina Aguilera song, I just don't have. <laughs> Range, right. um, or a her, a her song, yeah, one of the three. Okay. One of the three. <laughs> okay. All right. uh, last question of the night. This week or today it was actually it was reported that Little Dirk charges up to three hundred fifty thousand dollars for a guest feature for someone <laughs> he doesn't know. How thankful are you that it won't run you that much for him to hop on your album? <laughs> <laughs> Because I would be using that money for my school uh, debt. <laughs> 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 no, it, it's, it's, I'm glad that I already got that feature and you know, 
No. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep cruising. <laughs> <laughs> you keep your keep your head low. But you know, if Lil Dirk, yeah. if you're out there watching your artists on weekend gigs, we need her in an OTF chain. Next time I see her, Shuba's Girls Weekend, whatever it is, we need her in an OTF chain. Just just make it happen. Just make <laughs> it happen. That. Thank you guys. Um, Sydney August joining us tonight on Weekend of Games. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate you so much for giving us your time. This Thank was really you. fun. I appreciate you guys for reaching out. This was so much fun. Awesome. Yes. Thank you. Circle back when the album drops. We'd love to have you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Absolutely. All right, Sydney on with us tonight. We'll talk to you soon. We'll have her back Great. on. Sydney August joining us tonight on Weekend at Games. Man, that was great. That was fantastic. Yeah, what a what a lovely lovely human, and um, you know, huge shout out to to Ben Moscow for for putting me on. Put a and, plug on it, yeah, yeah, for putting me on. Who I put you on, and you secured the deal uh, like the touch of gray hero that you are. That's all I got. That's all I got. <laughs> Just charming gray hair. That's it. Best hair uh, on the show. Thanks. <laughs> Hey, I'm Weekend Gabe. Thanks for checking out this latest episode of Weekend at Gabe's. Click on any of the links swirling around my head and also hit the subscribe button while you're here. Thanks for checking out us here on YouTube.